Welcome to Essentials Explained. This is our third video covering pivot tables, where we'll focus on how to derive key insights from your data and set up your output tables to easily understand the trends in your business. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, let's jump in. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to add another column called year to date. And so what this will do is tell me whether or not it is within the year to date period I have of 2022 or an equivalent year. So if I use an if statement and say if month of date is less than nine, so within August or earlier, I'm going to say that is year to date. Otherwise, let's leave this blank. And if we fill this down, and let's do a quick look to make sure all of these are year to date. And then it becomes blank on August 31st. Great. And so again, doesn't work. And then January 1st is year to date. That seems to be pulling in correctly. I'm just going to make this a different color so I know that it's a calculated field and not a lookup. And the table starts summarizing our data. So good rule of thumb is always start at your highest level and then dig deeper where you need to. So let's start at our highest level product category. So I'm going to drag date into columns. I'm going to drag my price bucket onto my rows and then my pink color underneath. I'm going to drag my revenue into my value section. I'm going to redesign my pivot table to make it how I want. So Again, I like subtotals at the bottom of the group. I'm going to insert a blank line. And then ultimately, I don't think these grand totals on our rows are that helpful because it doesn't really tell me a whole lot. So I'm just going to go grand totals on for columns only. Let's make these formulas a little bit easier to read. And so here we have our, our same table. I'm going to go in here and I'm actually going to remove 2022 is I think it's confusing to see and I think people will not understand that it is a partial year and so I'm going to remove that first thing I want to do is be able to understand the annual change pretty quickly so I can look through this table I can say it went down it went down it went down but, but it takes a while what, what I want is I want something that will tell me immediately as I scroll through what's the takeaway and so let's just put an annual change from 20 to 21. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a formula. So equals 21 minus 2020. If you're getting a get pivot data issue, what the problem is, is in your file options formulas, you have this select use get pivot data functions for pivot table references. I do not like using get pivot data formulas. I prefer to reference the cells directly and I found that to be easier in my experience. So if I just fill this down, I get a number of different stuff, and, and this is obviously very difficult to read. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy this format because I think it's a pretty good format. And so paste special, control alt V T will give you formats, enter, and great. Oh, we, we have a pretty easily formatted table here. I think this is still a little hard to read, hard to know what's negative, hard to know what isn't. So what I'm gonna use is actually this format cells option. So control one, We'll open this format cells table. And if you go down to customs, you can build your own custom number format. So there's a number in here already that you can use as a template, but if you know how to write these, it's pretty simple. It starts as positive values. So I want a positive value with a comma. I don't want any decimal points, so I'm gonna close that. And now I have my negative values. For my negative values, I want these to be red. So I'm gonna use open bracket, red, close bracket. I like parentheses over uh, negative signs. So parentheses, dollar, comma, number, number, close the parentheses. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I've used another semicolon, and this will denote how Excel wants to treat zeros. I want these to show up as blank. So I will use double comma, and then I will hit enter. And so you can see this has been quickly formatted and is obviously a lot easier to read. I can look and at a glance be able to say, hey, really the, the downfall in 2021 was driven by the basic pricing category. All of our paint colors within the basic pricing category fell. And our premium category actually did okay. Red painted pretty well, yellow painted kind of mediocre. 
But what this lets us do is really easily view our data and understand what's happening. Let's say I'm gonna copy this. And I'll just show you another example just to, to walk through this process of, let's say instead of looking at the annual figures, we wanted to use year to date figures. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this year to date variable we built onto our filter section. And so what this will tell us is, do we want to select values that are blank in the year to date column or year to date? We want year to date. And so because I copied this, our 2022 data is still gonna be hidden. So if I just select that, it'll pop back up. What we can do here is a very similar process. So I'll just copy this formula because I like to copy things and that is the fastest way to use Excel. And so let's look at this formula. It is saying this is year to date and I want this to be the change from 2020 to 2022. I'm just gonna drag this over. This will be 21 to 22. I want 2022 and let's use an absolute reference in our column so that stays put and then we will subtract the value from 2020. So if I copy that, let's say I paste formulas all throughout my range. I copy this format in, I paste special, paste formats. What I can see, and let's do a quick check, make sure that's working correctly, that looks good. I can pretty easily view my data on a year-to-date basis as well. So what's my takeaway? From 2020 to 2022, we're doing pretty well, right? A lot different than viewing it in an annualized view. So the basic pricing category has done pretty well, especially in yellow paint, where our premium category has done exceptionally well on a year-to-date basis compared to 2020. Looking at 2021, you can see we had a slight regression in the premium pricing category, but again, 2021 had so much growth that it might be difficult to understand exactly what's what's driving this. And overall, we're, we're still up given significant growth within the basic pricing category. And so what I want to do is I actually want to create this analysis again for my customer groups, but I, I want to do it in a, a repeatable way that's very easy for me. So I'm just going to copy and paste these down here. And so let, you see how I lost my pivot table field list? Sometimes that happens. Just right click show field list. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my paint color and I'm just going to drag in my ownership category into the top level. So we want to group at the ownership category and then underneath, let's see if there's any interesting pricing trends that would be helpful to understand. So first thing I want to do is I want to double check that my change column is set up correctly. That is working. So if I drag this all the way down, it just fills down, keeps working. And so if I grab, let's just grab this format, copy, paste special formats, it'll give me all the formatting from this row, right? Which isn't exactly what we want because we want to keep this number format we built up here. So if I click on this cell and use control one, it'll pull up this format cells option. And I can pretty easily copy this number format we wrote. And so if I go down here, select these cells, control one, go to custom, I can just paste that in and we get the same exact number format we had up here. What you can see is, what's your takeaway? Your takeaway is the corporate group did pretty well in 2021 where your franchisees really struggled. You had pretty significant losses in both your small and large franchisees where your corporate group grew. Let's look at it on a year-to-date basis. So again, I'm gonna remove this pink color and then I'm gonna drag in the ownership category to my top-level grouping. Let me check these formulas. Looks like that is working correctly. Everything pulled down well. So I just need to copy this and fill it down. And now I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm actually just gonna use this format since they've I've already pulled in this number format up here, right? If I were to just take this and let's say I was, oh, I'll do this. And then I have to go back through and, and do that same process. I'm just gonna steal this, paste it in, make my life a little bit easier. So hopefully you understand the idea of how we went from a summarized raw data set to being able to understand our data relatively well in just a matter of minutes. And without over indexing on creating the world's prettiest formatting, we were able to actually see some of the top trends in our data. One bonus trick for you here, 
make sure your totals tie. This probably is pretty obvious, but if you just do a quick check down here, you can pretty easily see whether or not you, you've messed anything up. So I'm just gonna call this check. You can either do a subtraction or if you prefer an equals also works. And so if I just drag this over, um, it will tell me whether or not I have any bus in my model or I'm using any wrong numbers between my product and customer group. If you're interested in understanding the basics of formatting in Excel, please check out the next video in our series. Otherwise, thank you for joining us at Essentials Explained, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.